Okay, well, in a previous video, we solved a rather complicated integral that was of the form like this, where we had the integral of this polynomial, the square root of this polynomial in the denominator. And it turned out to be a complicated problem. You have to complete the square and then transform it into a form where you can use a inverse trig substitution. So it got me thinking, is this a problem that you would ever encounter in real life? Or is this just something that's designed to tutor calculus students? I mean, to torture, I should say, calculus students. And um, if so, what is that real, wor real world scenario? So you know, it always bothers me when the problem is just from outer space for no good reason. So I kind of went through here and I did able, was able to find a situation where in real life you would encounter an integral like this. So now let me give you a little background before I show that actual problem. In, in physics, if you have a motion, uh, uh, an object that's sliding back and forth connected to some wall by a spring, then this thing is obviously going to bounce back and forth. And so you can then solve the equations for what the motion of that particular object is. And the, the way you do it is you let the sum of forces equal ma, which is Newton's second law, and then you go through. So let me just kind of illustrate the solution here for this problem. Then I'll show you the more complicated one that gives us the actual problem statement that we had to deal with. So when you let sum of forces equals ma, there's only one force acting on this object, which is the force of the spring. And the force of a spring always goes, it pulls. It goes against the, ob uh, the object. So we have to give it a minus kx because it's in that direction. And then that equals ma. a is d squared x dt squared. So then from that we can reduce it to d squared x dt squared equals minus k over mx. Usually people do a substitution. Here I'm going to use the, word, the letter w to represent the square root of k over m. And then we reduce it to this form. The second derivative equals minus w squared x. So that's our differential equation. It's a second order differential equation. Now how do we solve that? Well, you can just do it by trial and error. As long as you come up with the right solution, it doesn't really matter. There is a mathematical way to do it. You have to use a little trick. The same trick that's used when they calculate kinetic energy, v squared over 2. So you say dv dt is the same as dv dx times dx dt. Well, dx dt we know is v. So then dv dt we can rewrite as v dv dx. So now we can say v dv dx equals minus w squared x. And now we have a separable differential equation. So we integrate the v dv part, and we integrate the minus w squared x dx, and we get v squared over 2 equals minus w squared x squared over 2 plus c. And from this, then, if we solve for v, we get the square root of c minus w squared x squared. Now, v we know is dx dt, so now we can separate again and integrate. And this now is how we get that square root of the polynomial in the denominator. It comes as a result of separating variables on this second integration. Now, in this case, the polynomial only has an x squared term and a constant. It doesn't have an x term. That's a little bit simpler than what we had to face. So given this simple physical model here of a spring you know, connected to an object, what's usually called harmonic motion, using Hooke's law and things like that, which you may have already been exposed to in physics. If not, it's probably on the agenda for the near future. Having shown you that, now let me expand the problem a little bit and show you where our actual problem came from. OK, so now I rewrote the problem. It's essentially the same thing. We have a force of a spring. But in this case, the mass is hanging. Rather than being horizontal, it's vertical. And so we now, if we do a free body diagram, if we write all the forces that exist on this particular object, we have the spring force going up. So I'll call that minus kx. And we have the force of gravity, mg, pulling the object down. So the same process, we take the sum of the forces equals ma, Newton's second law. We get this differential equation, md squared x dt squared equals mg minus kx. So we have a new term here, the mg term, which did not exist in our previous formulation. Now if I go through and take the same process, I let k equals square root of k over m equal w. Rewrite this as d squared x dt squared equals minus w squared x plus g. And then we knew from previously that equals v dv dx. 
Now I can separate the variables and get a VDV equals that whole thing times DX. Then we integrate both sides, obviously. And we get V squared over 2 equals minus W squared X squared over 2 plus GX. Solving that for V, V equals square root of minus W squared X squared plus 2GX, that whole thing square, square root. And then V we know is DX DT. So now, lo and behold, we end up with what we, what we wanted. So when we separate variables here and then integrate, we get the integral of DT equals the integral of 1 over the square root of the quantity minus W squared X squared plus 2GX. So we did, in fact, get this whole polynomial expression in the denominator. So therefore, I'm going to conclude that this is an interesting problem because it's not only challenging from a calculus standpoint, but it actually represents a physical system that's relevant to the real world and to life. Okay, send all your problems to solve at midnighttutor.com.